Hey, Retcon Raider here. Finally back with another video about the Pillars of Eternity 2 Beta. Now, I wanted to get back to this game in a more timely fashion. Unfortunately, I got held up by a few other things. I'll talk about all that in my end-of-month retrospective video, but for now, let's just get started. Last time, our band of generic adventurers arrived in Tikawara, a tribal Hawana village with aspirations of becoming a major trading post. The party is led by Retcon, an opportunistic, gun-toting elven scout. As a dual-classed character, he has an even mix of levels from the ranger and rogue classes. When he first arrived at the docks, he was met by a shifty dwarf who gave him a quest to find a missing group of explorers. But that sounded hard, so instead Retcon took on a side quest to go murder some fish. And that pretty much catches you up with all the major events that have occurred so far. The party did also encounter a group of killer plants, but that was a largely inconsequential side encounter. And now that our heroes have gotten a chance to rest and resupply, let's get back out there. Here we are back on the world map. Now, in theory, we want to go further inland, to the Hohina Ravine. But since we can already see a point of interest on the beach here, let's go check that out instead. It does say it's above our level, but... Pretty much everything is above our level right now, so we're not going to let that stop us. Something about the curve of the path ahead of you gives you pause. With the obscured sight lines, you recognize this is a good site for an ambush. At the same time, you don't hear anything out of the ordinary. Actually, you don't hear anything at all. No hum of insects, no rustling of animals. Even the air has stilled. Hmm. Well, if we had a cipher, we'd be able to choose a special option, but... Since we're just working with rogues and warriors, let's go ahead and investigate our surroundings. This is probably a perception check, and since Retcon has 20 perception, he's our best bet. And there we go. As you move carefully forward, you spot a massive lagu faith slinking around the wild growth. Well, we're on a mission to kill fish, so let's get a little closer. Since this is a sneak check, it calls for a rogue. The Lego Faith doesn't seem to have spotted you. Yet. Well, we've got several options this time. We can ambush it, we can hurl electricity at it, or summon a drake. Oh, I uh, guess none of our party members can actually do that. Well, I suppose we could try summoning a drake, but I suspect that will give us the same result, so... Let's just attack it. You creep forward, drawing your weapon. And we once again find ourselves in a small, optional combat map. A very small map, it looks like. We have no idea where this Lagu Faith is positioned. So, oh, there's a, a lootable item here. Let's grab that. Now, we have no idea where this enemy is, so we're just going to need to creep around the field until we can spot him. Then we can react accordingly based on his position. Oh, there he is. It's only a single enemy, so in theory we should be able to handle this pretty easily. But it did give us a warning that we were under level for this encounter. We'll start off this encounter by having Retcon hit the fish monster with Crippling Strike. That should theoretically hobble the target, slowing it down while also potentially making it vulnerable to additional sneak attacks. Actually, the Skulking Terror here is immune to afflictions that target Constitution. And, yeah, unfortunately, that means it's actually immune to being hobbled. In that case, let's try hitting it with a wounding shot instead. It won't slow it down, but it will do raw damage over time. And it should still make it vulnerable to more sneak attacks. Uh, you better run. Ah, of course. Well, it looks like our sneak attack missed, so all that deliberation was for nothing. Let's get our fighters in there so they can lock that thing down. We'll also set all of our ranged attackers to start pelting it from afar, and we'll start slowly moving our rogue around it. We're definitely landing hits on it now, but it's doing some pretty heavy damage to Raider. We'll need to keep a close eye on our health totals. In fact, I'm having second thoughts about moving our rogue into melee combat with that thing. We'll just switch her off to her blunderbuss instead. 
Our fighter is getting pretty worn down, so we'll tap his second wind ability. That restores a big chunk of his health, but he's still not going to last long in there. That means we really need to move our priest up so he can fire off an area heal. We'll also hedge our bets by trying to hit this thing with another wounding strike. Hopefully we can outlast this thing before it actually takes anyone down. Unfortunately, this thing is just immune to most of the abilities we can throw at it, though we have at least managed to blind it. Our only real strategy here is to focus on keeping our guys alive until we can bring that thing down with raw damage. I do have some other abilities I could try, like Strike the Bell, but that one's more intended for interrupting spells or charged abilities. No, we'll just have... Oh, whoa, okay. <laughs> Apparently Retcon landed a hit so big that it caused it to explode, so I guess the fight's over. It looks like that fight got us a fine club and a Lagu Faith liver, which I assume is some sort of crafting ingredient. The fine club's not bad, we just don't have any party members who are trained to use it, but it should still be worth a few coins back in town. It looks like there are a few other minor lootable items scattered around the map, so let's take a quick moment to scout the area before we leave. And I think that's everything. Let's move on. Completing that point of interest has opened another path for us, so let's go ahead and follow the beach here and see where it takes us. Okay, it looks like we found another loot cache. That got us some bounding boots, which I'm guessing is a magic item. We can't open our inventory right now, but we'll check it out as soon as we're loaded into another area map. There's also another loot cache right across this little stream here. But, yeah, it doesn't look like we can actually cross it. We'll have to circle around this bay here and get to it the long way. And there's another point of interest, the Boahica Pass. The rumbling reaches your ears first, a low growl from the land, before being pierced by the cry of a distant bird. The ground sets to vibrating beneath your feet, the growing roar of the stampeding beasts echoing around you. You crest a rise to find that the stampede has passed, now only a rumbling cloud in the distance. As the dust settles, you note that a few of the boar remain, fallen and still, with large feathered darts protruding from their fur. Hmm. Well, no reason to broadcast our presence. Let's move up quietly and observe. That, of course, calls for our rogue. You pick your way down the rise and approach the downed boars. They seem to be breathing, albeit shallowly. You're not sure how long they have before they meet the wheel. Obviously, we can't choose the special druid option, and putting the boars out of their misery would reveal our presence, so let's just wait and see what happens. Your vantage on the high ground offers a comfortable view of the boars. After a few minutes, lanky, four-armed figures lope out of the cover of the trees, each padding around the boars on the ground. The fish-headed wilder gurgle and hiss at one another before crouching to feast on their catch. The boars, still living, squeal pitifully in protest. Well, I guess that's just the circle of life. Um, we could try magic again, but I think we'll just stick with a good old-fashioned sneak attack. You creep forward, drawing your weapons. Okay, we once again find ourselves on an optional combat map. There's one of the dead boars, so the Lagu Faith must be right ahead. 
Oh, there's one now. It looks like this is a very basic Lagu Faith. No special abilities, no special resistances or immunities. We should be able to take this thing down pretty easily, but just to be on the safe side, we'll do the same thing we did with a Skulking Terror. We'll start off with a crippling attack, which will theoretically hobble it, making it easier to contain it until we can kill it. Well, once again, we missed the opening shot. We'll just send up the frontliners. This should still be a quick and easy fight. We'll have our fighter immediately try to knock this thing down. If we can knock it prone, that'll make things even easier. Yeah, that was pretty painless. Okay. Give me a real challenge. Not much of a reward, but sure. at least we got a bit of experience points. Let's see if there's anything further along the path here. Nice and slow. There's another dead boar. Watch and learn. Nothing on it. Let's go ahead and double back to check out that other path. Oh, and uh, let's also take a quick look at those magic boots we found. There they are. Bounding boots. Crafted from pliant leather and lined with treated wool, these boots seem customized for maritime life. Though common in Rautai fashion, the complex geometric piping gracing this particular footwear hides an enchantment that briefly lends even the clumsiest wearer the grace of a born rigor. Okay, it looks like it grants a leaping ability. That could theoretically be pretty useful. Let's go ahead and toss that onto our fighter. It can let him get into a fight a bit quicker. There we go. And now let's get back to exploring the area. I think it's probably safe to say we're going to run into some more enemies as soon as we get up here. And there they are. Looks like we're up against two more Lagu Faith. We've got Chief Echoing Strike and a Sidewinder, which I think is basically a shaman. The Chief seems to be some sort of unique named enemy, so he's almost certainly going to be the deadlier of our two foes. We'll focus on taking him down first. Let's go with our usual tactic. We'll once again try to start things off with a quick crippling strike. And another miss. I'm really not sure what to say here. Retcon's got 20 in perception. He has a whopping 49 aim, which is higher than anyone else in the party. I guess the RNG is just not on my side today. Well, we'll just have to roll with it. Let's get our frontliners up there, and then we'll start pelting these guys with ranged attacks. This might actually be a good chance to try out those bounding boots. Well, I obviously didn't compensate for their movement, but at least I dazed one target. Let's try to pull the chief back over to our fighter, and we'll also hedge our bets by having Retcon use the escape ability to teleport out of combat. We've got both of the Lag of Faith locked down now, but I don't think Raider will last very long against the chief, so let's see if we can stack some debuffs on him. We'll also go ahead and swap Retcon off to his dual pistols. That way he can attack a little faster. We seem to be doing okay so far. Our fighter is taking a bit of damage there, but it's nothing immediately life-threatening. We just have to be ready to trigger second wind if he gets too low. I'm also hearing a low sound, like spellcasting or... Oh, okay. The Sidewinder just came after Retcon. Oh, and we have another Lagu Faith coming in behind us. That must be where those spellcasting sounds were coming from. Retcon's also already in pretty bad shape. Let's move the Priest up, fire off an area heal, 
and maybe our wizard can do something to neutralize our new arrival. Fetid Caress might actually get the job done. There we go. We've got the chief down, so let's move the fighter over to the uh, sidewinder. But Retcon's almost dead, so let's have the priest toss another heal on him. We'll also have the fighter try to knock the sidewinder prone. Uh, unfortunately, it just wasn't enough. The knockdown failed, and the heal went off a split second too late. On the bright side, we did just finish off the Sidewinder, and it looks like the last Lagu Faith is paralyzed, so the fight's pretty much over. And that takes care of that. Retcon's back on his feet, but now he's also saddled with a serious injury. He'll be suffering some serious health penalties until he gets the chance to sleep and eat some food. Speaking of food, we've got some cuttlefish here. We've also got a Ring of Overseeing, which will be good on our wizard, and a fine Warhammer, which I don't think any of us are trained to use. Before we do anything else, let's go ahead and equip our new Magic Ring. It increases the area of effect of spells by 10%, so it's a pretty good fit for both our Priest and our wizard. In this case, I think I'll go ahead and put it on our wizard to make her attack spells just a bit deadlier. We haven't really gotten a chance to use many of our wizard spells just yet, but that's because you can only cast so many spells between each rest. Though, speaking of rest, I guess this is actually a good time to check out the camping mechanic. It's pretty straightforward, really. Your characters will recover from serious injuries as long as you give them some food while you're resting. And higher quality foods will grant temporary bonuses in addition to healing those wounds. The camping menu will show all the food items in your inventory over on the right here. That way you can easily browse through all the buffs and debuffs that they have to offer. Though some very basic foods like the hardtack here only offer healing and no additional benefits. Some food items, such as alcoholic beverages, have debuffs that offset their buffs. And other food items like the hot razor skewers here are just so valuable you never actually want to eat them. Since we're resting, let's go ahead and hand out some buffs. The cuttlefish is definitely going to our wizard. And then I think we'll slap a resolve bonus on all of our main damage dealers. We don't really have much left to choose from at that point, so let's just slap a small health bonus on our priest to make him a little more durable in a fight. And there we go. Everyone's healed up, and we've got buffs until the next time we rest. It also looks like we missed a bit of loot here, so let's grab that fish and continue up the slope. I do like the way that food works in Pillars of Eternity 2. In most games, I tend to avoid using one-shot consumable items that provide temporary buffs. I either end up hoarding them or selling them all off, depending on how useful I think they might be but I never actually end up using them unless I absolutely have to. In this case, I think they actually hit a nice level of utility for food items that actually encourages me to use them. Okay, looks like we're done here, so let's start heading back towards Hohina Ravine. Oh, but uh, before we go there, of course, let's Take a quick detour to pick up that other loot cache we spotted. We just found 192 Azada shells, which I believe is the currency for the local tribe, so it just automatically gets lumped in with our current coin total. And now we can head back to the ravine. Though... Let's see if there's... Okay, no, the uh, terrain actually blocks our progress here. We'll probably have to use our ship if we want to see what's on the other side, but that's fine. We can do that right after we've taken care of the Lagu Faith Broodmother. Alright, here we are in the ravine, and 
If you look over at the text box, you'll notice that we received two map bonuses, one for arriving at the ravine and one for discovering this specific sublocation of the ravine. There are probably going to be plenty of enemies ahead and, oh, we can actually already see a tripwire up there too. Yeah, I've got something over here. And some Lagu Faith right past it. Nothing too bad so far. Let's move Retcon up to disarm that tripwire. And we can see there's a Sidewinder over there too. Let's pull back and come up with a battle plan real quick. The Archibus actually has a pretty long range, so I might actually be able to kite one of those Lagu Faith over so we can deal with them one at a time. I'm not actually sure if this will work, but I figure it's at least worth a shot. Hey, we finally landed a sneak attack for some pretty serious damage, too. But unfortunately, it triggered the whole pod of enemies, so let's prep for incoming. These guys are pretty tightly clustered, so this is another good opportunity to use that leap ability. We'll just try to compensate for their movement this time. We'll also bring Raider up front to keep the enemies away from our squishier party members. And maybe we'll try to lob a spell at these guys. Yeah, let's see if we can paralyze one of these guys. Well, that wasn't terrible, I suppose. We at least managed to daze that Sidewinder with our leap attack. We'll go ahead and start focusing on taking him down. But we should also really see if we can do something about that guy casting a spell in the back. Let's rush our rogue up front and see if we can hit that thing with an interrupt fast enough to stop whatever it's casting. This is definitely going to be pretty close. Nice, that did it. Okay, so we interrupted its magic missile spell. Now let's go ahead and blind it too, just to keep it neutralized. Oh, I think she... okay. Well, she actually just killed it instead. I think we can certainly live with that. Let's take out that Sidewinder next. Take him down. At this point, I really don't think we need anything in the way of fancy tactics. We could probably just beat these guys to death the old-fashioned way. That guy's trying to make a break for it. But he's not fast enough. So, now we can all converge on the final target. Hmm, that one's trying to cast a spell now, too. And unfortunately, my rogue doesn't have enough guile left to toss out another interrupt. So we'll just toss out a quick area heal, and we'll hit this guy hard and fast, and hope that spell doesn't do too much damage to anyone. Well, the spell took out Raider, so now Retcon is suffering from the Bonded Grief debuff. But that'll go away once the battle's over. There we go. The battle's over. Raider's back on his feet, and the debuff is gone. Let's have a look at that loot. I got this, I got this. More food and a bit of bender trash. Not great, but we'll take it. Consider it done. This driftwood frame is strung with bones and seashells. They tinkle in the breeze. Oh, how festive. Yes. Well, let's go check out this little nook over here just in case there's something hidden. It almost looks like there's supposed to be a cave opening there, but I guess it's nothing, so let's keep moving up the path. Okay, we've got another enemy and another trap in sight. Oh, hold on, make that two enemies. That is a tamed scarab beetle. And there's a third enemy hanging back behind it. Looks like we've got another modest fight ahead of us, but first let's take a quick peek in this chest over here. Looks like a minor healing potion, some more shells, and a bottle of rum. And now let's take care of that trap. 
you'll notice we just gained a significant amount of experience, both for discovering another sublocation on the map and for successfully disarming that trap. Now, I could turn around and use this trap against the Lagu Faith, but you heard what I said before. I tend to hoard consumable items, just in case I need them later. It looks like we've got another enemy incoming, too, and this one is pretty huge. It doesn't look like it's a unique named enemy, but we can probably assume it's more dangerous than any of these other guys. I'm not crazy about taking on four enemies at once, so we should definitely consider all of our options here. I'll probably start off with my usual crippling strike, but I think this is also another good opportunity to use that leap ability. Oh, which is apparently only one use per rest. I didn't notice that before. Let's just get things started and we'll adapt from there. And once again, we've missed our opening shot. So let's move up the frontliners. As usual, we want to keep these guys away from our squishier party members. We need to move Raider and our fighter up front, but we also need to try to discourage those spellcasters in back. Our fighter will block off this charging fishman, and then we'll have the bulk of our ranged attackers focus on that acid beetle. Oh, let's get Raider into the fight here too. He seems to be having some pathfinding issues. Hmm, yeah, those guys are both casting spells now. I'd really like to move my rogue up a bit closer to see if she can take them out as efficiently as she took out that other spellcaster, but that would put her in a pretty dangerous position. Let's see if we have a spell that might help us in this situation. Nothing that's really jumping out at me, so the wizard will just keep attacking with her wand and we'll start sprinting the rogue around the boulder over here. Okay, looks like the red fin just finished buffing himself and rushed into combat as well. We'll have everyone keep focusing on taking down that sidewinder, except for our rogue. We'll have her keep circling around the boulder so she can flank that other caster. She's too late to interrupt that spell, so we'll just have her start shooting. Oh, but she can still try to blind the thing. Looks like our frontliners are still doing pretty well. Uh, let's go ahead and switch Retcon off to his pistols. And we'll try to do some ongoing damage to the Red Fin. Now we've got the Sidewinder out of the way, so... Everybody go after the big guy. And it... Looks like our rogue successfully blinded the other Lagu Faith. That means she can start dealing a lot of extra sneak attack damage to it, but she's also starting to take a bit of damage herself. It's mostly coming from that Scarab Beetle, so let's see if we can pull that over to our fighter. Ah, unfortunately it looks like it missed, so let's just get everyone back on the red fin. And we'll pull our rogue back behind this boulder before she gets hit by that spell. Oh, okay, no. Her pathfinding kind of went crazy there, so she got hit by the spell anyway. She's lost about a third of her health at this point, but it looks like the Scarab Beetle's focused on someone else now. So we'll just tell her to keep shooting at that caster. Most of our guys over here seem like they're still doing okay, so we'll let them keep doing their thing. But, yeah, it's time to pull the rogue back. She's at half health. Oh, and uh, there goes the red fin, so now we can move up to the next target. Let's have everyone focus on the scarab. But we need to bring our priest up to drop an area heal. Hmm, not quite close enough. We'll scoot retcon forward real quick. I'll teach you a lesson! And let's start hitting that caster with a few afflictions, while everyone else takes care of the scarab. In fact, let's have a few of our guys start hitting that caster. I think it's actually the more dangerous of the two opponents. Oof, yeah, that spell just knocked about half the health off of our fighter. 
It's definitely important to neutralize those spellcasters. Fortunately, our fighter can use Second Wind once every battle, so that shores up his health a bit. Okay, looks like we've got both of these guys on the ropes now, and we're all in pretty good shape. So, let's focus on taking down the caster before he can get off another spell, then we'll finish off the Scarab. There we go. And there we go. That's another battle under our belt. We already looted that chest. Uh, oh, we can look at the boulder. Sections of the boulder have been etched with strange runes and glyphs. Interesting. I guess that's supposed to tell us that these things are intelligent, but the tools and the traps were already kind of a tip-off. Not much in the way of loot this time, either. Just a Lagu Faith liver and another piece of food. Yeah, we've already emptied out that chest, so let's move on. We'll check out this little offshoot here. Again, just to see if we notice anything with our high perception. Nothing, so let's push across this little stone bridge over here. There's an obvious tripwire here to the south. That means there's probably something good back there, so we'll head in the opposite direction first. Oh, that looks promising. A large lagu faith, a broodmother by her size and crest, surfaces from the pool. Around her neck hangs a knotted cord strung with shiny odds and ends. She chirrups softly. As you draw closer, she gurgles in agitation, but does not attack. She dives back down and disappears. You hear splashing and chattering coming from further up the slope. Hmm. Well, that's both promising and a bit ominous. Though I think it's more notable that she spotted us even though we were hidden. Okay, I found the broodmother in the ravine. Strangely, she didn't attack me. Well, that makes it sound like we're basically being invited to approach them diplomatically. So, let's go take a look. Okay, there we go. We can already see one Lego Faith hiding behind those rocks over there. And there's the broodmother, along with a red fin. Cocking her head, the broodmother watches you and lets out an inquisitive chirrup. Hmm, got a few options here. A couple we don't qualify for, we can chirp back at her. And we have a special ranger option to send our wolf over, who seems to have lost his name. He is no longer raider, now there is only wolf companion. Wolf companion moves closer and sniffs at the Lagu Faith's feet. She observes the gesture, at first with wide-eyed panic, but softens as the animal shows only curiosity. Tentatively reaching out, she pats Wolf Companion's head. The broodmother stops gurgling and takes a tentative step closer, craning her neck with interest. Other Lagu Faith peer and chirrup at you. A young Lagu Faith pokes its head out from behind one of the adults and burbles happily. The adult ushers it back with a firm claw. Observing the exchange, the broodmother looks to you and lets out a plaintive cry. Who? Anna. Looks like we got a special perception note there. It sounds like she's trying to say, Huana. Well, we'll follow that lead. Huana. Snarls and gurgles rise in volume. The other Legu Faith bear their teeth at the name. Who? Anna. The broodmother hisses. Her attending warriors brandish spears, clubs, and blowguns. You hate the Huana. She screeches, not at you, it seems, but at what you've said. Hatch! Lings! Hmm. Many claws tighten about weapons, and tails lash in eager, hypnotic rhythm. The broodmother watches you. You can understand me? She bobs her head, chittering excitedly. I don't understand. What do the Huana have to do with your hatchlings? Take! She hisses, snatching and clawing at the air. Take! Hatchlings! The Huana captured your young? She screeches with emotion, rocking her whole body back and forth. Her bristling fin flashes like a blade. The other Lego Faith bare their teeth even wider. 
Turning her attention from you to the formation of Lagu Faith, the broodmother hisses and flicks her tail, gesturing down toward the bottom of the ravine, toward the village. The others bob their heads in agreement. She turns back to you and growls. Who? Anna? Hmm. So clearly we have a choice to make here. We can agree to rescue her hatchlings, we can attack the broodmother, or we can just walk away from all this. But, since we've already gotten this far with talking, I can rescue your hatchlings, but your clan must stay away from the village. The broodmother chitters and blinks at you, tilting her head this way and that. At last, she raises her head and trills to the treetops. One by one, the other Lagu Faith lower their weapons and snap their jaws shut. Please. She turns her fish eyes on you. Hatchlings. Hmm. All right, well, we've just updated our quest. And now we uh, need to go back to Tikawara Village and find a way to free the Lagu Faith hatchlings for the broodmother. It seems like the right thing to do. And, oh, there's a trap over there. Uh, thankfully, these guys don't seem all that put out that we killed about a dozen of them on the way here. Uh, there's another container there, but it appears to belong to the fish people, so we don't want to risk trying to steal it. Give me a real we will, however, take all these pretty flowers. At any rate, it looks like we're a bit past the 30-minute mark now, so I think this is a good breaking point for this episode. We'll pick up here next time as we journey back to Tikawara Village to rescue a bunch of juvenile fish people, or die trying. I guess we'll also check out that little area past that tripwire trap we haven't investigated yet. At any rate, this is Retcon Raider, signing off. Thanks for watching. Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Pillars of Eternity 2, Deadfire, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official YouTube channel, or the crowdfunding campaign over on FIG. Links are in the description.